Hi, I'm Florian, and today I'm going to talk about spectroscopy of extrasolar planets. It's a huge challenge to observe extrasolar planets because they are very, very close to their host stars. We cannot separate them in the sky, and they're outshined by their host stars. So to give you just an idea about the numbers, Earth is 10 billion times fainter than the Sun, and only for a couple of Jupiter-like planets which are far away from their host stars, we were, we were able to spot them, to directly image them. But this method only works for stars or for planetary systems which are very close to the Sun, and these are basically our neighbors. It looks like the following example of a directly imaged planet. Not that you think that the bright object is the planet. No, that's the host star. The little tiny dot next to it, this is the planet. In my work, I'm trying to find out what planet atmospheres are made of, and I'm very interested in those planets which might be habitable. So, let's take a short excursion. The vast majority of extrasolar planets cannot be directly imaged, so we need some indirect methods. One very prosperous technique is the transit technique, and the other very prosperous technique is the radio velocity technique. The transit technique monitors the brightness of the star, and periodically the star is eclipsed or occulted by a planet, and we can measure a drop in the brightness of the star. The other method is the radio velocity technique, and there we measure the spectrum of the star as it moves because of the orbiting planet. The most successful technique to study the atmospheres of exoplanets is transmission spectroscopy. This method works only with transiting planets, and it works when the planet is in front of the star. When the planet is in front of the star, the starlight shines through the atmosphere of the planet, and molecules inside the atmosphere filter the light at specific wavelengths, and this is what we measure. When we observe exoplanet atmospheres, we first have to separate the planet and the star. So, for instance, for transmission spectroscopy, what we do is we take observations before and after the transit, that means the star alone, and then we observe during the transit, this is star plus planet, and then we are able to remove the stellar contribution and get the planetary signal alone. Another technique to measure planet atmospheres is to obtain spectra of their day sites. And this is completely different to transmission spectroscopy because it can be done also with non-transiting planets. This method basically works in the following way that we obtain spectra in different nights and in each night the spectrum of the planet is at a different position and this is the way how we can separate it from the static stellar spectrum. We look for the molecular fingerprints in the spectra and each molecule produces a very, very unique pattern. So when we measure a specific pattern, we know exactly what molecule is inside the atmosphere. But we can obtain much more information. We can get information about the rotation of the atmosphere, we can in get information about winds present in the atmosphere, also pressure, temperature. So this is a very, very powerful tool to study the planetary atmospheres. Up to now, we have only investigated the atmospheres of Jupiter-like planets. And we have found a large number of molecular compounds like water, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, methane. But these planets are not habitable life as we know it cannot exist there. Because these planets are very hot, they have temperatures more than 800 degrees Celsius. How does a planet hosting life look like? Earth is the only planet hosting life, so what are the characteristics? What makes it unique? So compared to the other terrestrial planets in our solar system, Earth's atmosphere is dominated by oxygen, while the atmospheres of Venus and Mars are dominated by carbon dioxide. If an alien observer attempted to observe the reflected spectrum of a planet, this observer would see a very strange shape in the spectrum. At optical wavelength, 
this observer would see strong absorption, while at infrared wavelength, this observer would see a strong reflection. And this comes from the leaves from vegetation. This leaf reflects strong the green light and the infrared light, but it absorbs blue and red. And this is a very distinct spectrum. So this observer could say, hey, cool, there is life, there are plants. We have found a habitable planet and we have found a planet where life is on its surface. Cool. Life could also exist under different conditions. Oxygen is not necessary for life. Life existed long time ago before oxygen was formed. The early atmosphere of Earth consisted of carbon dioxide, methane, water, nitrogen, but no oxygen and life existed there. Now, there is another very interesting object in our solar system, and this is Saturn's moon Titan. Titan has a very, very dense atmosphere. It's denser, it's more massive than the atmosphere of Earth, and this atmosphere resembles the early Earth atmosphere. There is no oxygen inside, there is methane inside, and life, as it had existed on the early Earth, could exist there now. But there are also other very, very interesting objects like Jupiter's moon Europa and Saturn's moon Enceladus, which are very hot candidates for primitive life forms. With the current technology, we cannot inspect the atmospheres of terrestrial planets. But this is going to change very, very soon because as we are speaking here, big telescopes are being built and new space missions are to be launched. And with these new instruments, we're going to be able to observe the atmospheres of planets far, far away. And we're going to find biomarkers in their atmospheres and greenhouse gases. So it's really exciting to know that we're the first generation in human history which has the capability to find life on other planets. Future is really, really near and we're just starting now.